welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Cruelty Free Makeup Heaven. My real name is Chess. I'm almost 32 years old. I live in Belgium and I love makeup especially cruelty free makeup and I just have some fun with it when I can and I just share that with you. I'm wearing a wig. If I look down you can see it a little bit. This is one of my first wigs by the way. This is a human hair wig um, and I just added some extensions in it that were actually blonde and I colored them with some leftover paint that I had from back when I... Why is that lamp making noise? Literally clipped them in and I think it's a cute effect. I got some lenses coming, but right now I only have ones that I ordered on ball.com. I got like the two monthly lenses, like the all white one and an all red one, but it's quite dark red. It's not like bright orangey red, it's more to the pinky side a little bit, um, especially on my eyes because they are dark. That's what I was inspired by a little bit and also I've been loving the clown looks on Instagram. Oh, and also I'm wearing these kind of punky earrings that I got like a long time ago. <laughs> I love these earrings and they were from only but I don't think they have them at the moment but I think they're so super cute and then these two clips are from Wish. I've never been into super girly things but I don't know I kind of like the contrast for example with dark things. I like to have like edgy and classic and then like a little pop of something. I love pops of some things. I already started with my base. Um, I didn't set it with any powder yet or anything so I'm just gonna list those products. First of all I used the Ofra oil-free moisturizer. I really love this because I am possibly going to use paint and stuff. I just want to be sure that I hydrate my face first, so I love to use this oil-free moisturizer by Ofra. Then again, because I'm probably going to paint all over my face or use um, more colors than I would on my skin, I don't want texture showing, so I'm use this Perfection primer. This is not a small one, it's just like I've cut it up because I couldn't get to the rest and I just put it in the lower part and then I just push it on here so it's close again. So that's my little trick. I use a perfection primer on like my T-zone here and a little bit on my chin. And then this matte primer by Revolution Pro. I don't really know if this really does something, although my skin looks very matte now without even setting it with powder. So I like that. But I have to say this is like a very sleek feeling primer a little bit of com little bit comparable to the NYX photo loving primer. I don't believe these are silicone free. I think those have silicone to fill up your pores. I wouldn't recommend using this every day, certainly if you're not if you're sensitive to it, but I'm not sensitive to it and I like to use it for like more heavy duty looks. On my lips I added a little bit of this Crazy Rumors hibiscus lip balm and on my nails I'm wearing this Shine Less and Go color. It's called That's the Spirit, number 19. But I really love this and I didn't touch up my nails because it's spooky season and like, it's a great excuse to be messy. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm gonna go into it. Um, I'm gonna do the end of my brows. Probably I'm gonna do them red. I never tried that kind of brow trend where you, it seems like you have a slit and then a color. For the brows, I'm already gonna see where I want them their slits to be. I'm just gonna use this Prit Original one. Um, the glue stick, it doesn't really matter if it's that purple one, but I think the purple, it might just cancel a bit more color. And I'm just gonna get these hairs at the end upwards. And I might even use my fingers as long as it's still tacky. You could also rub your finger over it to get some on your finger and then use it. So this is quite dried up. I'm going to go over it again. So I'm loving using a brow pencil lately. This one is by Catrice. I cannot read anymore what's on there. It's just like a, a regular brow pencil with a spoolie on the other side. And I'm just gonna go through my brows like this. I don't know why I'm enjoying using this so much. I think it's because it's a little bit softer on the face than like if you would really use a brow pomade. I feel like... For that reason, a brow pencil and brow powder really helps. Now I'm gonna use like a eyebrow a pen. This is a brow definer, a long lasting brow definer by Catrice. It has actually not a felt tip, but the same kind of tip that I really like by my eyeliners to have. I'm just gonna, in the beginning, I'm just going up. And this gives like the illusion of having more brow hairs there. 
I like having a little bit of a fade too. I think it's dried up the brows and I'm gonna go over it with a cream concealer by Catrice and then with some powder. I'm actually gonna do that and I'm gonna reload the battery for a little bit so I can film longer because I don't wanna wait for like an hour. Okay, so I am back and I'm looking a little bit weird. Um, I don't think this is like flawless, but it's fine enough for me. So yeah, let me take you through what I just did. I finished this brow the way I started it. I just cleaned it up here. I made sure that I put some concealer here in a stripe and then went over it with this LA Girl Neon Shockwave lip liner <laughs> but some people also use it on the eyes but I just use it here as a base and then I went over it with eyeshadow first I used the shade Jupiter from the Flawless Constellation palette which is like a little bit more of a warm toned pink but I wanted a little bit more drama so I added a little bit of Triumph and Botticelli so I got it a little bit darker here so this is the Lime Crime Venus XL palette. It has a lot of beautiful pink tones so I think I'm also gonna use this one or these two for the eye look. Let me show you the lens. These are by Party Lens. I think I'm gonna do like a sort of burgundy pinky vibe. Then on the other eye I cleaned it all off, went over it with this Prit glue stick and just went over it once, let it dry, went over it again. Then yeah, I really wanted to smooth it over. It's not perfect at all, but once you cover it with more colors, like it will trick the eye a little bit, you will see. And what I did next was use this concealer by Catrice and I just like smoothed it over with my finger without like rubbing, but just like real, literally placing it on there. Then I let that set in, went over it with the banana baking powder. And then I went over it with the Absolute Cover Foundation. I also have on my face. Added some more banana powder with a fluffy brush so it's not too concentrated. So I worked that in and that's it. That's what I did. I also added a little bit of mascara. I don't know if you can tell. I just added a little bit of Lash Princess on them. I also went over this part with a powder because then it matches the matteness of this part. My skin gets greasy easily so this is a lifesaver. This is the eyebrow stylist set. It's natural brunette style. Now um, I'm first gonna place a little bit more color on my face itself which is still matte. First off I'm gonna blush up um, but I want to use the blush a little bit more heavily and maybe on a little bit of weird places for most people. So this is a Max and More blush and it's in pink coral. If you're not a really big blush fan, beware. <laughs> and certainly if you're using this on dewy skin, beware. We're actually doing the e-girl blush. It looks a little bit otherworldly, I think. Definitely if you overdo it like this. It depends on the things you add around it too. Oh, and by the way, I've used this brush by Naskita, the 217. It's a really nice fluffy brush by Naskita from the Ocean series. And then this one is 216, which is a slanted fluffy brush, also super duper soft. I've really been enjoying these brushes. I'm going to use some contour. I'm going to use this contour brush. It's also by Naskita. This is a 200. 19. I'm just gonna get this really dark shade that's almost gone. I honestly don't use this one in real life. I use it more for creative looks, so you can tell I've already used this a lot. Adding some depth here. And I'm gonna blend it out here. This will make the face look more hollow as opposed to lifted. If you want to lift your face, you need to place it up higher, but we're doing a creepy look. So for like nose contour or something, I would say use this little side of the brush. This is like easy to use like this. Actually bringing it up a little higher than I would normally do it. Normally I would like fade it into the crease, but now I'm going a little bit higher. But also getting it here. And I took some of that banana powder on this puff and I'm going to press it in the skin and also doing some contour with this. I don't do like crazy nose contour on the daily because I think my nose shape is okay for my face. Now I want to do the eyeshadow I think. 
and then I'm gonna add the cross here. I'm gonna use a P. Louise base in Rumor 01 on the eyes. If you really want like a really dark eye, then you can use a gel eyeliner as a base. I know there's also a black base by P. Louise and I'm sure it works fine and it's longer wearing and longer lasting but using gel eyeliner is a great trick i do have like one that is a little bit dried out by inglot this is just a one by bh cosmetics and the handle broke off so it's like really small the reason why i wouldn't pick some brush that is really dear to you is because it's like really hard to clean up again so yeah don't do this with your favorite brush so the eyeliner is here and as you can see it's a bit cracked and everything but that's not an issue because we don't need that much precision and if you feel like it's too dried out just put a drop of oil in there or something this is a favorite trick of mine i like to tap it on so don't go overboard with it because you cannot take it away <laughs> so just tap and do whatever you will not be able to use this brush to blend it out but this is just a good base for the eyeshadow you're gonna put on top even if it's not a black one i think i want to keep it not like a little bit rounded like not too crazy more or less like this i think i'm gonna use this gosh brush that i have for like ages it's like a little pencil brush by the way gosh is cruelty free but just get like a brush that isn't too near and dear to your heart i would say so with this clean brush that's a little bit dense, but not like super, it, does, it still has a little bit of flexibility in it. You can shear out the edges. Don't worry too much if at this point it isn't too perfect because we are going to use other colors on top. I just want to make sure that it's like not clumpy or that it's as homogenic or how you say that. It's like as much the same color as possible and a little bit faded out towards the sides and try to make it as even as possible i'm gonna start with a very dark color i'm taking the beautiful venus xl lime crime palette again i actually very honestly don't use this palette a lot and i feel like the shadows are a little bit scratchy i'm not sure if this is just an issue with this palette because I got it in a giveaway so I have no idea when it was bought for the giveaway. In the past I've always been like a fan of the formula of Lime Crime though but so I don't know if it's the formulation of this palette or whatever. Either way I do like the tones, I just don't use it enough so I really wanted to use it for today's look. Now I'm taking this brush by Nasquita which is, has a little cat hair on it apparently. So it's a bit dome shaped and it's pretty dense. So it's not like a flat packing brush, but it's more like the first brush that we use from BH Cosmetics. It's just perfect to pack on color. I think I'm going back in Botticelli, trying not to blind you. But I'm gonna press this in, which is gonna make the base a very dark Bordeaux. And I'm just gonna tap this all over where we put the black, even the more faded out bits, because we also wanna cover those. And that is gonna be the place where it's going to fade later on into lighter colors. Now, I wouldn't wait too long to press this in, like I waited maybe a little bit too long with all my explanation, because the eyeliner isn't like a bit too dried up. I'm gonna switch to a little bit of a lighter brush. I think I'm gonna go in with another color already and I'm gonna use this one. This is like more of a packing brush but it's a little bit thicker and a little bit softer than most packing brushes. This is the 215 from um, the Ocean series again by Nesquita. I think I'm going in Triumph first which is like a pretty pink color to the burgundy side. I'm just going to take it on the tip the most, so I'm doing like this, because this is really to concentrate more in the crease. And I'm tapping this over the edge of the other color we placed. I truly hope that these will blend out well. These shadows, I've only tried them once, and if needed you can go over it again with the first shade and the second shade. Next I want a more fluffy brush, so I'm taking this one. This one is also by Nasquita, but from the For The Makeup Addict set. I'm already going to blend this out with nothing on it. Just going over the sides. 
And this will help me decide if I'll be like, I want to add something more to this. I feel like this one is blending out beautifully. I do already know that my eyelids are gonna be so stained. I wanna bring this a little bit more to the inner corner, so I'm taking a little bit on here and going like so. This will give it a more intense look. Oh, my camera is gonna die, but either way, I'm building this up some more. I will show you in a little bit. I'm gonna just try to build it up some more, and I'll be right back. This is taking so much longer than anticipated because of all the battery fallouts and stuff. So that is why I already did this. It already looks kind of spooky. Let me tell you, all that I did is I used this red pencil, a makeup pencil, it's called, so it's for the eyes, lips, whatever, um, by Max and Moore in the color Red Fire, number two. And I just started like mapping out some details that I wanted. I also got some red on here, but don't worry about that. Um, so I made this for the clown eye look. The nose, I want to keep it cute. I don't know if I'm going to keep it like this. I think so, but I'm going to see at the end. And my mouth, I want to make it like a bloody clown mouth. So yeah, what I basically did here was like I used this as a base. And then I went over it with this second brush that I use by Naskita, which is like a great packing brush. And this color, I believe to make it a little bit more gruesome. And now I'm going into Botticelli to make it look a little bit more intense. A little bit like the Pennywise smile. I wanna do this. Oh yeah, and I also added that red in the waterline. It still looks kind of cute, but I feel like the lenses and the blood is this one. I'm not sure yet if I want to do like a Chelsea smile kind of because it dries up so I possibly need to shade this as dark as possible and then put this on top and make some sort of drips but either way I think this side is pretty okay I might clean it up a little bit with concealer I like to clean up with this kind of like cream concealer the most because it's like it obeys better if you know what I mean Clean up the sides a little bit. And also like that it's a teeny bit lighter than my skin color. Because this makes it pop out even more. I do clean it up in between on my hand. I've gotten so used to doing that that I don't... Sometimes I don't even show it anymore. This part is the most difficult over the eyebrows. Um, I'm gonna take that red again. Try to fix it. It's a cooler toned red so this is perfect I might go over it with black I don't know yet and I might add a little bit more blush on top this will also set the pencil a little bit because it's kind of greasy and I will still decide later on if I wanna do something with it I'll just keep it like this what if I also smudge this out a little bit with the leftover this shade on it. So I'm just gonna go over these lines but very softly. I need a little bit more of a finer brush now. I'm gonna use this little small one by Naskita. This is the 143. I'm gonna use the Botticelli shade again, the first one that we used. I might end up not using any paint. I think that's nice because then people can just do these kind of looks with whatever they already have. If you don't have certain shades, you can just like, you don't need three kind of burgundy shades or something. You could also just do this with one, but I really like this kind of blend, so then I need more. Also gonna use this Botticelli shade here. I know I already did this, but now I'm using this brush. I really want to fine-tune the shape a bit. So I'm darkening it up here at the base and also a little bit at the sides. And don't worry, like if you mess up, just use that concealer again. I think I might do the same around the mouth and I'll be right back because my camera is really acting up. You know what? Forget about it. I'm just gonna show you because I really feel like this shows how the whole look comes together. So I already feathered the first color on here and now I'm just gonna create some more depth on the corners of the mouth. 
You can be as precise as you want with this. You don't need to be super precise. That's the fun part about Halloween makeup. You can be messy if you want. You can do whatever you want. I'm adding darkness here and I'm staying like a few millimeters away from the edge. And this is still that first Botticelli shade that I used on the black base. Now I'm gonna use a lippy, I think. I have these two lippies that are really pretty. Stella and Audrey from the Great Gatsby collection. If you saw my first impression of LA Splash stuff and everything, you will have seen these. These are Audrey and Stella. Um, I think Stella is the darkest one. I wanna use that on the outside. It's like a beautiful bullet lipstick and you just push it like that and it pops out. It's so luxurious. That's a perfect match. <laughs> So I'm gonna create an ombre lip, basically. I still just have that one crazy rumor hibiscus lip in the middle. I liked it a little hard on my nose, but now that I did the rest, it feels a little bit out of order. Oh, and I switched the earrings, by the way. I don't know why, but this feels more, more fitting. I'm gonna darken this up some more as well. Gonna smudge it out a little bit upward. And using this at the sides of the smears that we did helps to give it a little bit more dimension. I'm also gonna do a little bit on my nose, but I wanna be very careful. So I'm gonna use a teeny tiny brush and it's actually, I think, for a nail kit. And it's really, like, it's really great to do detailed work. I'm making it the darkest where the lines bend. I feel like I like that kind of dimension. Kind of take another one because I want to be able to go back and forth if needed. And I'm taking that Triumph shade again that we used to and actually just smudging out the sides. I might add some blood on there later. I should go into Botticelli again because I want to make this blend better. I'm just tapping it over like 50% on the first shade and then some on the other. So I'm gonna add some of this underneath the eye to make it like a little bit more intense. I'm gonna take this a little bit higher by the way. Let's blend that out with something else. Brush with nothing on it. I feel like I want to keep this side a little bit more clean. I'm gonna add some more of those two shades and get it here. I'm just gonna take this brush and I'm gonna go like this to make it melt a little bit in the nose contour. I feel like this makes the look come together. So now I'm taking this Fright Fest Peel Off Fake Blood. I made sure to got, get the one that you can peel off and that means that it dries down. I'm gonna use a little first nail brush that I used and I'm just gonna dip in here and start making a bloody line. And normally it's gonna dry up in a way that it's still shiny, which adds to the illusion that it's bloody. So I would definitely use this one on darker colors because on its own it's really not as dark. I'm gonna do the same on the nose. I'm gonna focus a bit more on this pointy side. I think I'm gonna do the same with the cross. I think I'm gonna add some more here on the eye look itself, on the eyelid, I mean. <laughs> I'm gonna try not to mess it up. So I'm not gonna fully open my eyes until it's dried. I just wanna give this eye an illusion of being cut open. I'm also gonna add this over the brow even. Also gonna do a little bit on my lips, I think. Maybe some drips. 
going down. Just gonna add a little extra here. Connect it, and it looks a little bit like a drip. And then connect it to the lower. Okay, now I have to be careful with this eye, so I'm gonna keep it closed for a bit until it's fully dried. So yeah, I'm gonna come back with my lashes on and the lenses, and then I'm gonna decide what I will do here. I don't know, let's see. So here's a look with the lenses. I've actually been able to put these above my own lenses, which I like a lot because now I can see what I'm filming. This was a mistake though, that sort of peel off blood on the eyelid because my eye started to stuck together. It was a cool effect, but I would do it like just before you take picture or something, not like way before. And then you have to be really fast. It's all dried up now. You can touch it and it won't come off if there's red on here it's from other stuff I really like it and i like the vibe of two different eyes too and now i want to decide what to do here maybe put like my choker with the with the heart and then some blood again but first of all i want to do a little um star here because i want to keep it like a little bit festive probably sounds weird because this is not a super festive look but this is still a clown so i kind of wanted to add these little stars just in the inner corner i think so it's just a tiny tiny detail but i don't know i was stuck with it in my head like i wanted to do it don't be shy put some more i'm gonna put another one I do feel though that not everybody is going to notice it, but in close-ups you will see it. And this is from the Loose Glitter by Essence. This is in the color Supergirl. So yeah, I'm gonna put on the choker and then probably maybe add some blood to that. Let's just, let me just put the choker on first and I'll be right back. Okay, so I really like this. Now let me actually zoom you in a bit so you get a little bit more of the whole effect of the look. Oh, I totally forgot highlighter. I do have like a very tiny, teeny tiny highlighter brush. I wanted to have like just a little bit of highlight. Don't know if it's gonna make a lot of difference, but... Ooh, this is kind of chalky. And this is the Moon Child Glow Kit by Anastasia Beverly Hills. Just gonna do a little bit here too. Love that glow. I don't think there's still really another place or to do it. Maybe here a little bit. On my pinky finger. I'm gonna put a little bit here, just a tad bit. It's not that important, but it still looks cute, I think. Also gonna add some blood here. So it's gonna hang here. Just gonna quickly, I'm just gonna get this brush and I'm gonna see how it falls and then just use it to like kind of map out where it is. When I then move it upwards, I see where it ends and I can add some of this. I'm gonna add some more in the heart too. No, don't fall off. Why are you already peeling off? This is how easy it is to remove it. I've been moving my mouth too much, I guess. I'm gonna add it again, this time with my fingers. It seems like it was a little bit too easy to peel off sometimes. Other than that, if you do it around your mouth, don't talk too much. It will come off. Well, it stains a little bit, so be aware of that too. I think I'm gonna add some of these glitters. These are like glitters that came in a card, but I feel like they're little confetti kind of glitters. Oh great, it's all in my hair. Let me just take some pictures.